Hi guys, welcome back to the Butterfly Effect podcast. Today we are going to be doing a ranking video and I don't know why I'm explaining it because you've read the thumbnail, you've clicked on it, you, hopefully you've read, you really should be like, you know, reading what you click before you go on it. But this is all to do with the hardest Supermassive Games characters to keep alive. So a few ground rules, uh, these can be people uh, who are playable and non-playable, but the only um, thing that needs to happen for the character is is they need to be alive or dead at the end uh, you'll have say someone for example like the stranger in until dawn he always has to die so he doesn't qualify but there's certain characters that are super easy to keep alive in these games and there's certain characters where it's really difficult and on your blind playthrough you probably didn't save them this is our list for that so jack and i uh really like took a long time devising a list of 10 um, I think I had 11 people I wanted to put in the list. Jack, did you, was it 17 you had? I think I put like half of the anthology into my list. <laughs> yeah, it, it was yeah. difficult. Uh, we really had to come up with a system. And unfortunately, certain people didn't make the grade. People that I'm sure you guys are going to voice and you're going to like give us daggers for not putting in the list. But what Jack and I will do is each give an honourable mention that could have made the list but didn't quite do it. I'll let you kick off, uh, Jack. Yeah, so I think, um, yeah, we're going f until dawn through to the devil in me, aren't we? Um, yeah. But we're, we do have honourable mentions each, don't we? Um, so my honourable mention is Brad from Man of Medan. Now, a bit of context. Brad didn't survive in Man of Medan for me. Um and I think, honestly, the key one for me is the bit where he's chatting to Junior. We've got a few dialogue moments with Junior, because Junior's flipping out. He's saying, oh, it's the mist. You know, what's going on? Is there a mist? And I uh, think that you can potentially get Brad killed there. Like, I think I was with Julia at the time. Um, also, as well, he can drown in the section with Fliss if you play it out that way. There's the dark ending, of course, where they can, you know, any survivors can get gunned down. But, I mean, we were sat there, weren't we, mate? For me, it was really between Chris and Brad, like Chris from uh, Until Dawn, as what was going to be my honourable mention. And I just thought that in the end, more people would choose to not shoot Ashley than they would, you know, pass the segment with brad and junior so that's literally what it come down to in terms of my logic my honorable mention someone who won't quite be making the rank of 10 but i still wanted to give a shout out to for being difficult to keep alive goes to conrad in man of medan so yeah another man of medan character here uh, i guess with conrad the amount of times i see people fail the quick time event where he can get crushed by you know the gate when he's fighting olsen I myself tried to keep him alive, but failed in a playthrough where he fell off the ladder where I failed a quick time event where I'm escaping as like the Sailor Girl monster. Um, so yeah, he's just quite a tricky character to keep alive. I just feel like the only reason he didn't quite make the 10 is, is because especially in my blind playthrough's case, is that he can escape by the little fishing boat, like, you know, to go and get help. So he can have an early escape for the game, which does really help him. So yeah, like, uh, Conrad just doesn't quite make the cut. Okay, Jack, so as you can tell on the screen, we are starting with Jess. This is one that we both put on our lists. Um, I guess, like, one thing we need to mention as well, right, is she has her own trophy, if you keep mm. her alive, right? That's yeah. got to have some kind of significance, right? think so it was one of the reasons i put her down she didn't survive in my initial playthrough i know that she's absent for most of the game but like it really does come almost down to like a 50 50 choice doesn't it whether you run or whether you hide i feel like i remember when we was talking to Anya about this in the until dawn podcast is that my logic was that running was the better option because I know that you can actually get punished for hiding like when you're running away from the psycho. So I was thinking at the time, you know what, like it, rather than hide and it risk finding you, because at the time I didn't realise it would bring about like a don't move segment, I was thinking just run away and then obviously of course she then dies. But 
As you said yesterday, there's also a QTE after the don't move, isn't there? Oh yeah, it's really harsh, and honestly, I passed it, but it was like a nanosecond. Like, I, I think I saved just by the skin of her teeth. Honestly, so yeah, you've got to like, do a don't move section, which can trip some people off itself. And usually when those fin those sections finish, you think you're safe, you think you can have a deep breath, put your controller down, but no, it goes hit the X button straight afterwards. And uh, I bet a lot of people probably tripped at that point. So yeah, it's almost like the game really wants to kill Jess up, you know? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but like, if Mike's not quick enough getting her in Chapter 4, then she can die and get her jewel ripped out before she falls down the elevator shaft. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to put her at number one and she might get bumped up, she might get bumped down. We are going to see. So yeah, we'll put Jess there at number one for now. Our next one is Matt from Until Dawn. Uh, I mean, Jack, so like, he doesn't have a trophy in his name, but mm -hmm. in my opinion, he, he's very tough to keep alive in this game. Yeah, and you know what? It makes me proud because he did survive in my blind playthrough of Until Dawn, him, uh, him, Sam and Ashley. So I'm actually going to say that I do think he is harder to keep her, uh, keep alive than Jess. And you know what it is? It really does, obviously, you know, we've talked about the flare gun, haven't we? If he doesn't have the flare gun, I think it's really down to the whole decision of whether you go to choose to save Emily or not. I feel like a lot of people will have doubled down try and save Emily because you get two bites at the cherry don't you now I'm pretty sure in my blind playthrough I went to save her but then when it collapsed a little bit more it come up again it was like do you want to save her or jump to safety I was thinking you know what I'm going to jump to safety and I think that is what ultimately saved Matt in the game for me I like I say I feel like the logic being is that more people live hidden as Jess than they would have jumped to safety as Matt then of course you've got the whole flare gun thing as well if he doesn't have the flare gun then of course you know he just gets hooked by the Wendigo so I'm gonna say that he's worse or harder to uh, keep alive mate what about you uh, yeah, I agree, because there's also the elk death as well, where you can get hit there. Like, I don't think many people fell for that, but it's still yeah. a feasible thing. It is there, and also, he's pretty much, like, on term. Every, uh, Jess, any way she can die, Matt can also die, because Matt can be there with her. So all of Jess's points are the same full Matt. It's just Matt has all these additional ones. And one thing I want to add to you, mate, is that I also think the flare gun choice is also quite a flawed one in Until Dawn, where there's really a lack of logic where um, someone can just shoot the flare gun in the air based off of whether you agree to go to a fire tower or not. And in my opinion, it punishes you for agreeing first time with Emily, and I just don't see the reason for disagreeing with her. It's going to tense in the relationship more than it already is, and... Like, it's going for a radio tower. That seems like such a good thing to do. So, like, yeah, like, Matt can really get punished. And he he might not have a flare gun because it might have been shot already. It might be that Emily had it. So if he does fall in those mines and a Wendigo drags him, he has an auto-pinned death. So it's really harsh on him. So, yeah, I certainly agree that we are going to put Matt above Jess here. Yeah, I'm happy with that, mate. Next, we have... So someone from Man of Medan did actually make the cut mate um mm. but he's he's our first non-playable character and that is junior because of course as we all know junior can survive he can escape with the main five because he's kind of like the you know the baby pirate who kind of like maybe being forced into it we he can become good i guess uh but yeah quite tough to keep alive in your blind playthrough uh jack did he survive or not didn't know he um like I said before with Brad, he shot Brad in the head and then he shot himself. And again, it's one of those ones where when I found out Junior could survive, because obviously you get, you know, you choose the right dialogue options, you give him the rebreather so that he doesn't, you know, see the mist anymore. I was dead surprised. I was thinking, wow, Junior can get on the boat with you at the end. It was, again, it's like a credit to Man of Madan's branching, really. I feel like I'm going to let you take the lead on this one because I'll be frank, I completely forgot about Junior, didn't I? 
like when we was sort of getting together our top 10 before completely forgot about him so what's your opinion on it i'll be frank i've only played man and madan three times and um you know because i can't be asked to go back for the platinum each time <laughs> i can't keep the guy alive like it's because of the quick time events that olsen pins you in before you have to give him you get the breathing apparatus i just you know me i can't do heartbeat sequences and i just suck at them like I got all the dialogues done with him to, like, you know, kind of, like, save my own characters, but he always shoots himself. Um, and I look at other playthroughs and I, like, talk to other people about Man of Medan, and he always just seems to die. He seems like such a rare ending character to kind of keep towards the end. And also yeah. we have to remember as well that he can be a part of that dark ending where the chopper can gun him down as well. So, yeah, like, I, I think it's just not... If, like any of you fans were to build your 10 without kind of thinking it might be that junior slipped your mind and i wouldn't exactly blame you because he's non-playable but we just kind of went a little bit outside the box with this one we thought he's quite tough to keep alive now in terms jack of where he falls in this rank quite difficult to say because he's non-playable he's almost non-comparable um i will say that in my game, both of these survived, Junior didn't. But I still don't think that warrants putting him above Matt, for example. Mm. See, this is, what, this is what we was finding the other night, though, weren't we? Like, yeah. the, the logic of this is interesting because, like, you can have more opportunities to die, but they're not necessarily difficult. But then you could have a straight 50-50 that's, you know, most going to go against you. So, like... How do you weigh it up? Is one way more effective than the other in terms of being harder to keep her alive? It's difficult. Because, yeah, I think you're right. Like I feel like Junior, for a, a very large majority of people, would die and not make it back onto the boat. Um, part of me wants to put him above both of them, but I don't know, maybe in between them. Maybe Jess drops down and Junior sits in the middle. I'm not sure, mate. Because I do feel like, although he has less opportunities, the logic I'm looking at this question is like, in a blind playthrough, how likely is it that this guy is going to make it out alive? I think that he makes it out so little times that he would be maybe higher up so difficult though it I'm really, really is it, it, and honestly i feel we're gonna annoy so many people with our list here i kind of want to put him above jess because i feel like at the end of the day i feel most people would have got to her with mike it's just whether you did run or hide um i myself did hide i got her out and it was fine with junior it's like it's heartbeat sequences but also, dialogue. I feel like dialogue. the characters... Yeah, dialogue as well. And also, I feel like maybe certain characters have to be alive to find him. So, like, yeah. I'm certainly... Jess will certainly fall to a free here. I kind of want to leave Matt where he is. I'm thinking maybe Matt above still, though. Because of how fucking harsh that flare gun is, you know? And the amount of times... Matt, I know, like, we said maths might not come into logic somewhat. Because Matt can die about five or six times. Junior can only yeah. really die twice, I think. But I still think with Matt, there are so many opportunities where I can see a lot of people killing him off. Whether it's at the flare gun moment, or whether it's at the end with the Wendigos with uh, Jess in the mines. You know what? As uh, like I do, I do agree with you. You know what? As a potential um, turning point on it, isn't there a premonition with the flare gun? And if so, do you remember what that premonition was? Was it to give the flare gun to Matt, or was it to keep it? It Which is to give sure the flare gun. One. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's to give the flare gun to Matt, but there's that thing where if you agree to go with the radio tower, they just shoot it in the air. So right. it's one of those ones where you, you might know to give it to Matt, but it might be that because of a choice that had nothing to do with anything, you might just shoot it rather than stow it. It's, it's, right. it's real tough, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? In let's let's just leave it for now. Then 
as as it is. Yeah. I'm quite content with that, yeah. It is chalk and cheese though, but yeah, I will put them like that. Okay, right, next one. Now, here we have uh, Taylor from Little Hope. Now, Jack, I'll give you the mic here because I think on your original list, you basically had everyone under the sun and, in, you know, in the Little Hope game uh, in your list. It's, you? it's, it's true. So, like, obviously, when I did my blind playthrough of Little Hope, Andrew and Angela survived. The reason Angela survived is because she confronted her demon. And my logic for this is why the Little Hope characters should be in there or, you know, is at least up for discussion, is that it's so 50 50. Because, as I said the other night, you can literally have the characters confront their demons, which is a 50 50 in itself. But if you then still blame Mary at the end of the game, that brings the demons back and then the characters die. So I think the reason why Taylor is in here as opposed to the others is A, because John always makes it to the house no matter what. Daniel, um, I forgot what the reasoning was for Daniel. I know you have the fight in the basement with the demon. Um, but I think the main clincher for Taylor was that because there is the 50-50 between her and uh, Daniel, like you're playing as Andrew and you can choose between either of them to save. There's also another 50-50 where she can go left or right. And if you go left, you run into a demon. And of course, there's QTEs that she can potentially die there as well. So that's the logic for her being in there. But my initial instinct is that she... Oh, she's going to be nearer to the bottom, mate. I feel like she's going to either be above Jess or below Jess. I don't think she's going to be higher than that. What about you? So Taylor did die in my blind playthrough, but as you know, and I've told you a million times, it's because I, you know, I did a playthrough co-op, and I don't think she necessarily died through a choice I would have done. Uh, so it is really difficult. I feel like the Little Hope kind of game is just such an odd one to really compare it to. Do I think she's harder to keep alive than Jess? Probably. Oh, it's difficult because the hardest part gonna... is that left or right choice, right? Yeah. But it's not 50-50 because you still get a quick time event, right? Yeah. But even then, you've got the 50-50s of, like, Mary at the end. And then you've got the 50-50 of, like, if, if Taylor does not confront her demon... I'm pretty sure that the demon comes back at the end regardless yeah. if you choose to save Mary or not. So there's two 50-50s there that you've got to get right, whereas with Jess, there's only one. Yeah. So I'm actually leaning to saying that Taylor's harder to Let's keep that. alive. I think Junior and Matt are still in that order, but I do agree. Yeah. Next, we have Eric King. Uh, mm. So, Jack, he didn't make your blind playthrough, um, and that was because of the explosives, right? Yeah, that was on me. Like, I completely ballsed up. But if there's a character in this series that's super massive, like, really wanted to kill off, it's Eric, isn't it? Like, the, the number of deaths that this guy can have. You think of, yeah, the explosives, Salim can shoot him, um, he can fall off the rope, like, near the beginning of the game. Um, obviously, you can get killed by the bats at the end. This guy just has so many deaths. Um, I mean, I'll let you. I'll let you lead with a little bit on it, mate. What do you think? It's tough for me because I put him in because he's got seven potential deaths. I think that might be the most in Supermassive Games history, certainly in DPA history, I believe. So yeah, like he had to make the list because of the sheer amount of times. So there's a point where when he's no longer ridden in plot armor, he can just die off at any point. And mm. um, I, I do generally, I am generally unsure how many people really had him alive at the end of their blind playthrough, because for me, I was fortunate enough that I saved Eric. Um, mm. So like, my and I've only played House of Ashes once, so I'm not really aware of the jeopardy he can go through. So I'm kind of ready to kind of give this one to you, because me, I'd maybe end up putting him slightly near the bottom, but only because I'm kind of unaware of his deaths. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, did you have a tougher time with him than certain the other four that we have on the list at the moment? 
The problem with me is because my one was sheer stupidity that I got him killed with the explosion. Yeah. Beyond beyond that point, I'd be pretty confident that I'd keep him alive. But you do get the feeling, because I will say this, I might be wrong, you can have it at me in the comments if you want. It's obviously apparent that Nick, Salim and Jason have to get to the end, right, of the cocoon. But it, it's almost as if Supermassive expects you to have killed Eric off by that point, because he does take a back seat, and considering he's like the corporal or like the commander of the thing, it's a little bit odd that he's a bit absent. Of course he can have the moment where he abandons Nick and such, but like, he does noticeably fall back down the pecking order. Do I think he's harder to keep alive than Jess? If I'm being subjective, mate, I'm gonna say no. I know that there's more opportunities for him to die. If I'm being purely subjective, it was sheer stupidity that I got him killed off in my blind playthrough. I think he's a prime like... example of why sometimes the maths and the amount of deaths doesn't necessarily mean he's the hardest to keep alive, because I feel a lot of his are quick time event based as well. Like, yours was a choice based one. Yeah. But a lot of his deaths are basically fighting the villains, right? The bat, the creatures. And I yeah. feel if, you know, you can do your quick time events, you probably can get him to the end. Yeah. I think that's it, and I feel like more people would screw up with Jess, maybe, than they would... Oh, see, oh I don't know, I could be sat here all night. He's either above Jess or below Jess. Yeah. Maybe we'll keep him below Jess for now. Oh, Abby. Right, so, Abby, we killed her off at the same point, right? Yeah. So, it. what is tough, right, is that one thing we always say is that Supermassive Games always tells us, do not fuck with nature in Until Dawn. If you hurt elk, it's going to punish you. If you hurt a bird, it'll punish you. If you hurt a squirrel, it'll punish you. Then we get, like, you know, this game with, like, the quarry. And, like, we've got a mate who's infected in front of us. And we both deliberately, like many others, I know so many of you out there have thought the same as us, not to shoot Nick. Because he was still in human form. That is my point, and I'm still drumming this home to this day. He was still in human form. I feel like a shot could kill him there, you know? Mm. He wasn't a wolf yet. But then the right option was to shoot. Otherwise, you get your like, head decapitated. And, it, and it's such a difficult one, because I feel almost that is slightly... I'm not bitter about it, but I do think that is slightly just against what I would do every other time. So, like, uh, it is a really tough choice. We both killed Abby off at that point, naturally. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention um, is that I was speaking to a friend's group about this video that we're currently making, and they really pitched hard for Abby, and they voiced that there is a glitch. I'm not sure if anyone else suffered from this glitch, but apparently sometimes you can try to shoot Abby, but the trigger doesn't work and the wolf comes for you anyway like we did that by choice but even if you want to shoot nick you can still get abby killed there and i think it might be patched since but if we are talking blind playthroughs it might be that a few people accidentally killed abby off there so i feel for reasons you know like the nature reason i mentioned and the glitch she is a very tough character to keep alive in your blind playthrough absolutely and that's just the one thing as well I mean, obviously, yeah, we've talked about that one, like, do you shoot Nick or not? I mean, of course, there are breadcrumbs in there to suggest that by shooting him that the infection would protect him, but I feel I do feel like the majority of people got Abby killed off. Um, there is also the bit as well, though, where obviously if she does survive that and you play and, you know, maybe Emma's infected in the car, which, again, is apparently very likely. I know that didn't happen for me and you, mate, but... If Emma's in the car and she's infected, or um, if she there, there's a wolf anyway that jumps out and then chases after Abby, you play as Caitlin. You've got the shotgun. You've got to be bloody quick with that gun, with gun, gun, and uh, you've got to be very accurate to shoot the wolf because it's chasing after Abby. And if you fuck that up, the wolf then gets and kills Abby. So that's like another instance that I think players could get caught out on so i think she's probably going to be at the higher end of this uh this list mate 
Yeah, I agree. I, I think she... Uh, I'm tempted to put her above Taylor. Above Taylor. So you think that Junior is harder to keep alive? I'm just trying to think yeah, through that. Yeah, that's the one I'm debating because Junior, like, it, it's it's the don't breathe sequence. No, don't breathe sequence. That'll be a bit harsh. The heartbeat sequences um, versus a really harsh choice, you know. Mm. A 50-50 that I feel like you know, you've got to get the one that minority of players probably picked. Yeah. I feel the only reason you're picking to shoot Nick is either if you hate him or you panicked. I feel if you think about it, you don't shoot the gun. Especially because of Until Dawn. This is why it makes me think that actually she might be above Junior in a way. Because, yeah. of, because you've got Until Dawn in the back of your mind of not shooting Emily. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe she's above Junior. In which case, should we quickly compare with Matt? I mean, would Abby necessarily be harder than Matt? Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, oh, like, because how do you compare this, guys? Like, Abby yeah. is a really harsh choice. Matt is a bit like Chris, you know, where like. Ashley can lock him out, and you can have your set your fate sealed a chapter or two early. Um, the, Similar setup in a way as well, because obviously with Matt, you've got the choice of whether to, you know, go and save Emily. Yeah. You get two. You get two throws of the dice at that. Obviously, with Abby, you only get one throw of the dice. If you if you you know choose to not shoot Nick, that's it. She's dead. One thing I kind of do want to point out as well, that in our blind playthrough, we both saved Matt, but neither of us saved Abby, so the writing might be on the wall uh, there. That's a good point. Yeah. So what are you saying, that Abby goes to number one then for the now? For the moment, yeah. I think maybe, yeah. Uh, I think she right. can get pipped, but for now, I think that might be our list, you know? Yeah. Right, and let's move on then. I will stress as well, this is interchangeable. Tomorrow I'm not going to disagree with something, I just know. <laughs> but... yeah. Right, next we have Mr. Jacob Custos or Custos or Custard or whatever his name was. Um, I guess a big reason he's in is because he can die a lot. There are a lot of reasons, you know, like areas he can die. Some really stupid, silly ones really early doors, whether he drowns in a lake, whether he falls face first into a bear trap. Um, I think as well, one of the most common ones, maybe, and I think it might be one that you had, Jack, is all to do with this cell and breaker puzzle, right? Yeah, that, that's literally it. I found like it was relatively easy to get to that bit of Jacob. I mean, I didn't choose to jump into the lake or at least, you know, go after the thing that was down there. Um, there's the bear trap one. I don't actually think I even had that coming. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 getting out of the cell was difficult for me because I knew what the numbers were, but there was only four levers, and I was thinking, "Oh, that's gate five. Like, how am I supposed to open gate five when there's only one to four on the lever?" So in the end, I just like started guessing. Um, I didn't realize that it was like a maths puzzle. So, oh. Even as well, you can back out the puzzle and leave Wolf and Jacob there. And if Laura switches the power off, the cell's open, right? And then you can just lead him yeah. to get eaten by Nick then and there. One thing yeah. I want to mention with Jacob as well is that I feel I nearly killed him off. But I got saved by the fact that I uh, hid in a bush, but I failed the... Uh, not the heartbeat sequences, the, the breathe ones, right? The hold your breath mm. or whatever. The wolf found me, and I would have died had I not let Bobby put blood over me. And I feel like a lot of people are attacking Bobby there. So, because I trusted the hillbillies at that point, I was lucky enough that I had a mask of blood to save Jacob. So, like, yeah, that, that points to him being easier because I kept him alive. But I feel like I got a little bit fortunate there, maybe. Because I failed a quick time event with Jacob. So I certainly feel he is a tough character to keep alive. Also the fact that even if he escapes the cell, he can potentially have the uh, 
Is it? I don't know if Emma has to be alive for this to happen, but if he escapes into the woods, he can run into a werewolf again, can't he? he and can, he can get yeah. there. Um, I kind of want to put him. I'm thinking he's fourth. I feel like he's not as tough as Junior. Because, like, at the end of the day as well, he survived my blind playthrough. Right. Uh, so, like, I feel like he's above Taylor, Jess, and Eric. I feel he's, like, in the middle of the park at the minute. But realistically, I just... I still see Junior as that oddball where not a lot of people are getting him out early doors, you know? Yeah. It's difficult as well, because neither of us saved Junior, but both of us saved Matt. So the more I think about it, I, I wonder if I should put Junior above Matt, you know? I'm having, like, a, a late switch already. It's, it depends. Are we basing this on our playthroughs, or are we basing it on, like, what we think that the majority yeah. of people did? Because I... In that, because the thing is, in that case, I'd say that Junior would be number one. Like, I'd, uh, if, if we was basing it on, like... Ah, oh, see, oh, this is so bloody difficult, man. I feel like Jacob. I'm gonna just gonna go up the list. Um, harder than Eric, yes. Harder than Jess, yes. Harder than Taylor. He's got a few fifty-fifties. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, it's definitely that area. I feel. Um, like we're talking like hairish, right? Somewhere. Yeah. I'll say that yeah, he's harder than Taylor. Yeah. So Again, I feel like we could easily move some of these yeah. around come the end, mate. We'll have to do like a final look at it. Our eighth nominee we have is Mr. Caleb Hackett. Now, this is one that I vouched for in my list. Um, before I say why, um, when we had our initial discussion when we built our list, I think this one slightly caught you off guard, didn't it, Jack? It did, because to be honest, I'll I've completely forgot about Caleb. Um, I was thinking about Jedediah and Bobby, wasn't I? But at first I was thinking, oh yeah, I, I can see why. But I know we dug into Caleb a little bit, didn't we? And we figured out that if um, if you went into the kitchen and he ended up in the fridge, there was a way for him to stay alive because he'd remain infected. Yeah. Um, so there was like, a little bit of back and forth, weren't there? But then, of course, we reckoned that most people would probably just shoot him as Caitlin. Yeah, that's the thing. Bullet. Because he is about to kill Caitlin, so in self defense, you shoot him with the silver bullet. Whoop to do, that's what we did. We killed Caleb, right? To yeah. make him survive, you have to metagame it and almost get fortunate in certain areas. There has to be a teddy bear that you might pick up by chance. Then you have to place it in a certain area, I believe, and then you have to lure him. Then he has to be in a freezer, and certain people can't die because he has to remain a wolf in the fridge. Because if he's a human in the fridge, like, you know, a poor child just freezes to death in the freezer overnight, you know? So yeah. you have to actually fuck up in certain areas as well in order to keep Caleb alive. So... I just feel like if we're going off it, if it's blind playthrough, I feel 99% of people are killing Caleb off. I feel mm. um, as well, like, I feel most people generally are in general, because if you're trying to get an all everyone survives playthrough, he, he actually can't make it, you know? Um, yeah. It's just, it's so difficult. And he's a bit like Junior, where there's just all these variables and, like, you know, like, factors that have to come in to make him survive if you know how to do it you can go on the quarry right now and make him survive fair play but yeah if you if we didn't have guides online to read to know how to do it i reckon you'd be there for a really long time yeah because i mean obviously you guys know because we've put this in the title of the video we are basing it off like a you know your blind playthrough and the thing is as well, another why it's difficult to keep him alive is that it is a big if because it doesn't necessarily happen to everyone. Obviously, if Emma makes it back to the lodge and she's not infected, which it did happen for us, mate, she finds the silver bullet, doesn't she? Yeah. In the basement or Abby. And one of them is banging on the door saying, 
I've got the, you know, I've got the silver bullet. So then when you get the choice as Caitlin to either run in the kitchen or investigate the banging, I reckon the majority of players would investigate the banging and therefore get the silver bullet to shoot Caleb. So again, that makes him difficult to keep alive. I don't know if that's just us being subjective because we kept Emma clean for like the entire game or whether most people, you know, got her killed or got her infected. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So by that logic on your blind playthrough, he is like borderline impossible to keep alive. Like if you manage to, guys, on your blind playthrough, keep Caleb alive, I really respect it. On that logic, because he's a non-playable character and he's very similar in that regard to Junior, I feel like I could put him here, like, with him. Um, would you say... Maybe, maybe even above Matt, you know? I think, honestly, man, I'm vouching that Caleb is harder than Junior, because Junior, like, if you're good at quick time events and dialogue, you can actually get him alive, you know? Yeah. But with this guy, there's so many variables, it is unreal. So yeah, like I agree, like he's here, he's level with Matt. Now one thing I'll say as well that yeah, maybe above Matt as well. Like, I know like this is a me one because I vouched for Caleb so hard, but we we both had Matt survive in our blind pl blind playthroughs. I know a lot of other people did as well because a lot of people had like three, six, eight some people. So Matt still is savable, you know, if you have a flare gun if you jump to safety, which can completely save him, take him right to the end of the game as well. But yeah, like like I say, it's just these variables with Caleb, you know? Yeah, it really does come down to... Because let's face it, most people would get past the scrapyard scene, right? Yeah. Because obviously, you know, like with Caitlyn and whatnot, it really does come down to the people go in the kitchen or not. Because if they go in the kitchen... Even then he can stay alive, because like I said, he can end up in the fridge. Caitlin can be dead, and he can just be sat there infected in the fridge. Yeah. Or it would have to, for him to die in the kitchen scene, it would have to require Chris Hackett to have been killed, which to be honest, most people do, for players to have picked up the bear, and then as Caitlin for them to have thrown the bear into the fridge. So what we're basically saying is how likely is all of that against Matt when you can jump to safety? Because if you jump to safety, you don't need the flare gun. Yeah. So I think he's harder than Matt then as well. Because like I think, we, he's, I think he's harder than Matt. Yeah. Because like we say as well, like most people will just shoot the wolf first chance they get with a silver bullet, which I think a lot of people are. Um, so would he be harder than Abby then by that token if it's literally that close? Yeah, it's tough to say as well. I feel like I feel like Caleb's maybe tougher, but I almost don't want to... It sounds really horrible for me to say this, but I almost don't want to reward like a non-playable character. I still don't think he is the toughest. Uh, I'm happy to whack him there in second as well, because I feel like so many people were killing Abby off of that choice, you know? Yeah. With the yeah the no shot. yeah let's 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 roll with it. Next we have Ooh. now this is one this was your final pick, Jack. You've mm -hmm. gone for Miss Kate Wilder. Did yeah. The logic being is that I think that I know Supermassive they want you to keep everyone alive, but I feel like they expect one of her or Jamie to die, and I think that they mostly expect people to give the screwdriver to Jamie because she's going against Dumet, she's baiting him out also as well I don't think they expect people to have both of them alive after the glass trap mostly because of the achievement called shattering expectations so naturally you're positioned as Jamie and because of the premonition uh, it, which I still think is a bit misleading and unfair to be honest it shows Jamie getting squished against the wall. I think a lot of players will think, well, in which case then, we should spin the wall round because, you know, nothing's happening. Plus the fact that when Jamie's initially, you know, lunging at the glass wall with the screwdriver, it does nothing. So that sort of tells the player that that's not going to be useful either. So I think Kate could actually be pretty high up 
fairly high up, mate. There's a lot of stuff against her. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, so yeah, yeah. I, I completely get what you're saying. I think the screwdriver, we both killed her off in the same manner because we gave the screwdriver to Jamie. It was logical to do that because she's the one who had to go out and face Demet as bait. It was just logical to give her a weapon. And yeah, like the premonition sort of, yeah, kind of guides you to do that as well. And because it sort of says that Jamie's going to get crushed, you know, crushed by a wall. And then you press the button because you're like, well, I don't want that premonition coming true. And it almost steers you away from thinking the screwdriver's going to work because that very screwdriver did nothing. Like when Jamie tried cracking the glass wall open. So yeah, really tough. And I know like when we made all these videos about the devil in me, there's loads of you that are like, oh, it was clearly obvious, you know. Fair play, if you got it, that is great for you. But we found that quite tough, right? Um, yeah. And she can die in a certain few areas as well, like whether it's on the rooftops, whether it's on the speedboat, and then she's got the dark ending as well. Um, it's tough to say because, yeah, like that choice is really difficult that I do think she could be higher tier her. Um, mm -hmm. I feel if you get through that, though, I feel maybe everything else is fairly okay because it's very quick time event heavy. Which, um, because I, I killed her off there, I think she might have a few heartbeat sequences. I might have killed her off there because it's me and heartbeats. But yeah, okay, I'm just looking at her on the list. I think harder to keep alive than Eric. Definitely. Jess, definitely. Because I saved all of them. Uh huh. Taylor. I'd say, I'd say she's harder to keep alive than Taylor. Agreed, yeah. Um, I'd say more so than Jacob because I kept Jacob alive and I know that's a selfish thing but you know I have to go off my own experiences as well I do agree to be honest even though like yeah I mean they both died in my thing but I'd still say that yeah she's harder than Jacob yeah and when I get to here with Junior this is where I'm a little bit like I really have to think <laughs> It's all about Junior, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, just like Ju the point Junior's where like you... the barricade this match, isn't he? You know what? Honestly, to honestly equal out what you said with Caleb, yeah. I might pull the same trick here and say that he's a non-playable character. It's not fair that he... Yeah. You think with Snape, there's multiple ways she can die. There's a premonition that's geared against her. You've got the dark ending, so I'm just going to call my little veto and just put her at least above Junior. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fair. Do we reckon she's harder than Matt? Because technically, for our sake, I mean, I know we've... I'm wondering if we've put Matt too high here, but I just, I do yeah. think that flare gun thing is really harsh. But yeah, like, we both saved Matt, neither of us saved Kate, so by that logic, does she deserve to go third as well? Hmm... So, I mean, the big thing, it's the glass trap premonition, isn't it, versus the flare gun. Oh, I call it controversial. I think maybe she is more difficult than Matt. Okay, I'm happy to do that. Let's uh, do that. Yeah. The Devil in Me was a very tough game. Like, not yeah, a lot of people I, had a full five. I mean, again, per speaking from personal experience, I did save Matt. I didn't save yeah. um, Kate. So... Yeah, I mean, like we've said, this list, honestly, within an hour or two's time, it could easily change again. But I think in the here and now, yeah. Yeah, and it would just be good to get your comments in so we can generate a discussion. Because, like, you know, this list is interchangeable and it would be nice to have the fans come in and kind of give chime in their opinions. I'm happy yeah. to leave her there for the minute. Because, I, I mean, Caleb, like I say, it's a non-playable character. You, it, it, they could, they're so equal, you know, like you can't really compare them. Caleb has all the variables that need to go in his favour in order for him to survive. So I feel like a lot of people aren't the same. I, I have seen a lot of endings though where people take Kate to like, you know, the dark ending. Or I, I do see her on the end, you know, at the shore quite a bit as well. So I do know yeah. people have saved her. So I think third could be a really, you know, strong place for her there. Best spot, yeah. Okay, right, we'll go for our final one. Now, I think we all know who this is. <laughs> Even hints at it on the picture. We have got beloved Erin. Now, I'm going to kind of like summarise a few places she can die. 
early as the dark room if you don't accept the inhaler on a curator's cut perspective as well if you don't get to the room in time which according to you jack's quite tricky to do yeah no, uh, that's true then there's the silver ash institute where a lot of people didn't trust the voice coming out of the mic as jamie because like you know we've just seen jamie in a different scene and she's in another room where she couldn't possibly have told Aaron. i know curator's cut does explain how she managed it but a lot of people mistrusted that and then ran instead of hid and died uh so yeah. that's quite harsh then there's the air chamber uh the third of like five possible places really um i killed her off at this one the air chamber admittedly yeah like people have given me grief for it for like putting out a little moan and a little bit around how i said that um i guess i didn't really have the knowledge of how inhalers worked but i just assumed you know it's it's not like a gas chamber it's an air chamber right so she's suffocating and i thought it was like a pump of air into her lungs to help her i thought that was like a weapon or a tool she could use and um, mm -hmm. i felt a little bit bitter that there was no clue that there was a window kind of glass break in Kate's chamber. I feel if that was given to us in a clue, that would have been very logical. So yeah, I killed Erin off here um, at what I would argue is a 50-50 coin toss, but that's fair, that's the way it works, right? But then there's the fourth one where she's running away in the barn and it's like another 50-50. Do you wanna stay down or do you wanna go high? Um, so tell us about that, Jack, because this you suffered a loss here with Erin from that very scene so I want to get your perspective I did it seems unfair as well because obviously you know that if a character is on their own like if it's just Jamie or if it's just Kate they just barge the door open fine um, but of course yeah if a character like goes up and then she runs the door by herself for some reason she can't get the door open which makes no sense the problem with me and Erin is that I understand the logic, but I, there's also logic that I can use to go against it. So, like, you know the one with the, the, the inhaler, taking the inhaler and not? I'm pretty sure there's a premonition that shows Dumet, like, pinning her against the wall. So I was thinking, like, that's basically telling you not to fight him. So, I don't know, I, that, that's how I look at that. The gas chamber one... Yeah, like it's it, it's definitely flawed. I do feel like they should have had a clue telling you that one of the chambers was, you know, had a leak in it. Again, I feel like they drummed it home so much that she needed an inhaler that the gas thing was a little bit obvious. Plus the fact they released a demo showing her alive if you saved her. Um, what was the third one? Was the next one the the barn that we just talked about? Uh, the third one was the air chamber one. Uh, the second. Oh, one was Silver the... Ash, wasn't it? Silver Ash Institute. I've missed out. Silver Ash Institute. This one, again, yeah, it's it's one of them things where, like, because when you wander around that room, you can see, like, you know, that Dumet's clearly set up some fake text messages from Jamie to make him or to make Erin go against Jamie which is obviously important when it comes to the, you know the whole cupboard choice and I feel like that he's probably edited the thing of Charlie as well like the you know the thing on the voice recorder so I feel like it's at least it was to me it wasn't to everyone that's completely fair but like it was obvious to me at that point that Dumet was trying to single Erin out against everybody else so that's why i just did what jamie said um having said all of that there are 50 50s and she does have a lot of deaths so there are a lot of 50 50s um because some she of them are arguably flawed as well and she can also yeah. die on the speedboat in quick time events on top of all of those now, it's true. honestly, I'm going to pitch it, but when I think of the poster girl or boy to kind of like represent the question, which is the title, hardest character to keep alive, and I just try and think of a character Supermassive Games really try to kill off. For me, it's mm. Erin, and mm. I 
honestly would pitch her. Uh, she, she's the first name I wrote down on this list when I came up with it. For me, Erin is number one. Right. Okay, that's interesting. So let's just... Oh, should we compare her against Abby then? Yeah, okay. Let's put it Because obviously Abby, it's literally the Nick thing, right? So yeah, what we're cause... saying is like... Would it be more likely for people to have not shot Nick and then shot the wolf with Caitlin than it would be for Erin to get through all of them 50-50s? Yeah, because for me, like, uh, like Abby has, like, quite a flawed 50-50 choice. Mm. But I feel Erin has, like, three of those. Yeah. It's true. It's weird because I know that she didn't survive in my playthrough, but because I got her so far, I am like slightly subjective and I'm sort of like, well, I'm not sure if she should be number one. It's also weird as well that like she's got lots of opportunities to die and there's Eric at the bottom of the list who also has a lot of opportunities to die, but he's ranked at the bottom it's so it's weird i feel i feel like i'm gonna have to put my biases aside i feel like that yeah more people have killed erin off than abby yeah so i think yeah i think number one mate i think we've got the okay that's fair because i mean for me with like the abby one is such a tough choice that i feel most people are but I feel like that same thing goes for Erin, but times three. Because I know people have killed her off, like, in the Silver Ash Institute. I killed her off in the Air Chamber, and you've killed her off in the bum. And I feel yeah. like you could probably feel bitter about all three of those decisions, or you'd ha at least have a case. Abby, you can feel bitter about her choice, but Erin just has that in abundance, you know? Like I say, like... She's just the name I think of when I'm like a really tough character to keep alive. And it's sad, right? Because it's always like the shy girls. It seems to be a theme here that like they really want you to kill off the shy girls, which just sucks. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. Erin and Abby. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I mean, should we, should we leave it there, mate? Or should we take one last look and see if there's any jigging around? Um, I'm happy to leave it. I mean, it might be, because to be honest, I'm not going to lie, mate. If I look at it, there will be a million changes that I do. Yeah, I'll be here yeah, for another 15 yeah. minutes. But We have used logic throughout the video. And obviously, to those that are listening, maybe you're sat there nodding and agreeing or at least understanding our, understanding our logic. There's some of you that are thinking, no, wait, guys, you've missed something. And if that is the case, let us know in the comments. But... I mean, yeah, I think that is our top 10 for uh, hardest characters to keep alive, mate. Erin being number one. Yeah, so guys, as we mentioned, this is a subjective list. We're probably not going to agree on it tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, this, like Jack said, we came up with it with logic. This is what we, we have. Um, I think it's a fairly strong case. I think we have 10 characters here, which could definitely be on this. There are some that we might have missed, you know, like Jack and I had a maybe pile of like about 11 more names who didn't quite make it, so like, we could give cases for those guys as well, for example. But either way, uh, we've been sitting on this video idea for a while and I've had a lot of fun doing it, and I am just most excited really to listen to what you guys have to say. I can't wait for you to mention names that we should have put on the list, names that you think, you know, like spots that we should change around maybe you think taylor's the hardest and she should be a number one maybe erin's super easy to keep alive and we've got it completely wrong honestly guys go to town in the comments let us know what your lists would be and let us know what you agree and disagree with fantastic hope you enjoyed this uh, episode guys and we will see you next time bye guys see you soon